Hello, uh, we will continue our discussion on cloud computing, uh, different aspects of cloud computing. So, what we are uh, discussing in during this uh, phase of this uh, lectures is more, more looking at the different other aspects of cloud computing which make this uh, computing more efficient, uh, what are the different technology supportive technologies around it and uh, how uh, the uh, compute overall cloud computing may be made uh, more practical. right? So, one of the aspects of this cloud is uh, its energy consumption. We have we have seen uh, we have seen in case of uh, when we discussed about resource management uh, that uh, resource uh, is in the cloud. Though theoretically there is uh, infinite volume of resources, but the resources to be managed appropriately uh, so that uh, the service can be provided to the maximize uh, maximum for to maximize its benefit, right? So, it is a it is a type of situation it uh, what we looked at that where it is a win win situation for uh, both the uh, uh, consumer and the uh, provider and uh, how this resource can be managed. One of the aspect of uh, resource management what we have discussed is to reduce the energy consumption right. Uh, what, uh, what is seen that uh, this overall major the dark side so called dark side of this cloud computing is uh, is huge volume of uh, energy consumption or huge amount of energy consumption. If you are if you have experience in any any type of uh, going through or if you have read any type of data centers or if you go through this uh, internet uh, different resources you will find that typically the in a, if you look at a data center the cost of the computing uh, uh, equipments or computing infrastructure is somewhere match uh, with the other environmental infrastructure like uh, the space, environment, AC, power and so and so forth. So, it is something like x is spent on this is more or less x is also spent on that side right. Rather in some cases it is more costly because of the of the cost of the particular space and uh, power and type of things. Secondly, the amount of energy spent uh, in maintaining this uh, type of infrastructure is enormous right and what, what is being seen that uh, unless this uh, overall consumption things uh, consumption pattern uh, can be reduced or the volume of consumption can be reduced in some way or other, uh, uh, it, it may not be feasible to scale up after a extent right after a particular uh, limit. Uh, so, so, though uh, someone can have infinite uh, or someone can have uh, money to spend, uh, but there may not be the supply is not available to the things. So, in other and uh, another aspect what we see that it is becoming sometimes it is a uh, more uh, hazardous or more uh, negative effect on our environment, especially the carbon footprint. More you consume, more energy being produced, more may, uh, more is the carbon footprint. So, going to under unconventional energy sources may be other things etcetera. Nevertheless, the overall this computing world uh, need to look for some sort of a uh, more quote unquote green computing. So, uh, what we will uh, discuss today briefly is that that different aspect of great green cloud computing though it has uh, direct uh, uh, connection or direct relations with our resource management, but we will try to look at the different aspects of this green uh, cloud computing and uh, uh, if we whenever we are setting up any infrastructure. So, this this should have keep we should keep in the mind not only the cost of the infrastructure, but also this consumption of energy how to reduce that consumption of energy and so and so forth type of things right. So, that is uh, what we discussed today is the green, green cloud. Uh, if we uh, uh, quickly revisit our uh, definition, so what it says that it is a cloud computing is a model for enabling convenient on demand network access to a shared pool of configurable resources 
like network, server, storage, applications and services right. This is the first line, there are different characteristics right? like we say that it can scale up or infinite scaling, it has the ability of uh, uh, metered service, uh, broad network access and different characteristics are they are omnipresent or ubiquitous access to this computing facilities and type of things. Nevertheless, this definitions what uh, if we look at uh, other uh, in a little deeper way there is a lot of uh, energy hungry resources are there right. Like if you even look at networks, servers, storage uh, and applications and services which run of the things they all take lot of energy. Uh, if we can efficiently use those there may be there may be a chance that we can reduce the overall energy consumption otherwise the energy consumption may be considerably high. Like say if I say that if I have uh, if I uh, my running VMs are say uh, number of servers I am having 4, my number of running VMs are again 4. So, every server can accommodate say, uh, say running VM is 8 and every server can accommodate 4 VMs. So, it may so happen that every server is distribu distributed to VM per server, it may look good that there is a load is distributed. But if you look at the energy point of view, the energy com consumption may be pretty high. Instead, I could have packed them into two server of four for each and, uh, and so and so forth and other two server I can put on a off mode or a sleep mode or a passive mode uh, and this could have saved energy in a bigger way. So, these are the these are the aspects which we need to uh, try to look at and there is a, there is a definitely a it is not like that that simple how, how we are trying to pose the problem uh, how we are discussing, but there may be a lot of calculation of projection and type of things there are issues of SLAs, uh, QoS and type of things, but nevertheless taking all those into consideration there is a there is lot of opportunities may be there to go green right. Uh, so, uh, if you if we if we visit this uh, means see the other slide. So, at the down we have uh, this infrastructure right uh, where uh, cloud physical resources storage virtualized cluster servers networks like Amazon EC2 go grid and uh, different other solutions are there. At the middle we have uh, a cloud programming environment or platform and cloud hosting platforms which uses this infrastructure and uh, there are Google App Engine, MapReduce, uh, Microsoft Azure and a kind type of things and at the top we have this SaaS or software as a service scientific computing etcetera. Now, this in turn uh, every layer upper layer in turn uses the downwards layer and a more uh, efficient is this computing at every uh, more efficient is the implementation of each layer may help us in reducing the overall energy consumption right. So, it is not only that efficiency out here though we when we look about energy we mostly look at the IES type of things, but it is also that at a higher higher layers also contribute type uh, some uh, means uh, also contribute uh, towards this proper energy management right. Like if I have an algorithm which uh, which which uh, takes unnecessary loops and takes more CPU time uh, that may be energy inefficient then more efficient algorithm which is which which is uh, which where we can reduce the complexity and type of things right. So, it at, at much higher level I can do something which in turn uh, reduces my uh, energy consumption or CPU uses time or network uses time and uh, that in turn reduces the overall uh, energy consumption at the uh, of the cloud infrastructure right. So, uh, looking at uh, this if we try to look at uh, green cloud. So, green computing is a environmentally uh, responsible and eco friendly use of computers and their resources right. So, it is it is uh, first cut is that it should be uh, environmentally uh, responsible means minimum carbon footprint and so forth and eco friendly use of computers. In broader terms it is also defined as a study of designing, manufacturing or engineering using and disposing of computer devices in such a way to reduces the environmental impact right. So, if we look at that 
how the designing, manufacturing, engineering, all those things go on. Green cloud computing is envisaged as a uh, to achieve not only efficient processing and utilization of computing infrastructure, but also minimize the uh, energy consumption. Right? So, it is not only uh, how not only it will uh, be efficient in processing and computing and giving maintaining QoS and SLA, but also it uh, gives uh, minimize the energy consumption. So, what when we look about uh, talk about green cloud computing, we look uh, both side of the thing. Cloud advantages are well known uh, if we again look uh, quickly uh, reduce spending on technology infrastructure. So, what we feel that that instead of infrastructure I uh, shift to the cloud at, uh, infrastructure globalize your workforce in a chip so that it is uh, omnipresent streamline processes reduce capital cost, improve accessibility, minimize licensing of new software, improve flexibility. So, there is a host number of advantages are there, which may in turns try to reduce the computing at different uh, in a in a different environment and in a and going uh, like in terms of uh, setting up your infrastructure at your local things and going to the things. So, in a in a sense it 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 may appear that we are uh, in, in a sense we are reducing ener energy consumption, but at the other end the consumption things increases. So, what we are trying to look at is not that that what we save out here we are more at look at the how to make those uh, service provider ends how things can be made more efficient. So, challenge especially in terms of energy consumption and carbon footprint like if you see the Gartner report on uh, 2007 IT industry consumes 2 percent of the world contributes to the 2 percent of the world's total carbon dioxide emission. So, it is a pretty high right it, though it talks about IT industries as a whole, but uh, this uh, this major player or the cloud service provider are our major contributor of the things right uh, they are cooling their overall energy consumption is is pretty high like big data centers installation people say uh, that it is like a it is a mini city uh, like consuming power so, so highly like. So, there is another report which say 1.5 percent of the US power consumption used by data center which has more than doubled since 2007 it is also around the around eight, 2000 uh, since 2000 and cost 4.5 billion dollar right it is also a report which is around 2007. So, in down the line 7 years uh, it is uh, it has more than doubled right. So, as it is a ever increasing phenomena that uh, this um, shifting towards cloud or cloud industry is growing at a much higher pretty higher rate. So, this figure of uh, energy consumption is likely to increase much more than uh, getting reduced. So, it is more more demand for cloud more energy consumption and so and so forth right. So, there is a need of uh, green cloud computing definitely there is a need of green cloud computing. So, uh, importance of uh, energy increased computing demand data centers are rapidly growing consume 10 to 100 times more energy per square foot than typical office building right. This is a one rough cut uh, thing energy is cost dynamics energy accounts for 10 percent of the data center operational cost right. What other things what you say what we say OPEX and can rise to 50 percent of the next few years what they say that it is, it, it is such a high rise going on. Again one some reports said that the cooling system cost around 2 to 5 million dollar per year uh, this is also somewhere 2013 or so that report which came up. So, uh, again a rough cut if you see the energy consumption. So, the equipment takes around 40 percent power distribution takes around uh, 15 percent cooling system around 45 percent. So, if you say the if you look at the computing equipment is taking uh, 40 percent over the total energy rest 60 percent is taking by this infrastructure it means that's in means uh, 
uh, cloud environment infrastructure itself right to set up this cloud that we need to set the environment that is AC power distribution appropriately power distribution UPS supply etc that taking over the 60 percent of the energy and the computing is around 40 percent. So, computing stays less. Now, if you look at the DC architecture, so this is also evolving right, it is also changing over time and uh, more complex equipment are coming uh, of course, more energy efficient equipment are also coming. So, two tier uh, DC architecture access, so initially it was uh, access and coal layers. So, you have the centralized coal layer which is a highly uh, mesh, they are interconnected with a uh, very concentrated mesh, con mesh uh, network and uh, there are access layers from here the things are uh, these are the different access layers right. This is the if you look at the DC architecture type of things uh, computing architecture. So, full mesh core network load balancing using ICMP protocol right. So, this is typically there. So, there are different type of switches there layer 3 switches layer 2 and layer 3 rack switches and computing servers. So, computing servers at the end mile uh, or at the edge and uh, this layer 3 switches which uh, routes traffic are at the core of the network. So, this is the typical architecture which was typically there in uh, means, uh, ex means old or past uh, DCs though there are still some of the things are still existing. So, uh, rather uh, like all other uh, large network this uh, DC architecture present which see as a three tier DC architecture that is most widely used nowadays access aggregation and core layer. So, there is a access layer, there is a aggregation layer. So, it is uh, so it is not only this layer 3 switches at the core, but also layer 3 switches at the aggregation layers and then we have that. Uh, this access layer. So, it is a hierarchical structure uh, made to proper management and appropriate distribution with minimization of uh, or better load balancing and type of things and so and so forth right. So, this is this is more for uh, it is it is more amicable for uh, to scale up it scales up much better than our uh, previous things like scales over 10,000 servers and so and so forth for a particular DC. So, it is a uh, this sort of architecture sir uh, there. So, uh, along with that it has uh, high speed architecture three tier high speed architecture in uh, increased core network bandwidth uh, two way ECMP load balancing. So, 100 uh, gigabit ethernet standard uh, connection over the thing. So, it is a much higher uh, thing. So, what we have think previous thing was a standard connectivity uh, with uh, 1 to 10 uh, gigabit connectivity uh, whereas, here we have uh, a jump of 100 gigabit connectivity. So, this, these links are very high speed links and then we have uh, much lower links at the uh, down the line right. So, this uh, so it is uh, better aggregations better scaling up and uh, better management of that whole infrastructure is there. So, it is more better responsive uh, type of arch uh, architecture. So, this present days architecture whenever we deploy all those things these are again uh, we need to look at the energy consumption of the things. It is not only facilitates better computing or basis better accessibility of the computing things, but also it uh, consume at times much more energy right. So, we need to have a trade off that whether uh, whether there is a uh, requirement of such, such things or uh, that facilitating or providing services and increasing energy performance versus energy trade off should be there. Though we do not compromise on do not want to compromise on performance, but making it efficient or energy efficient is another goal. So, this is a typical uh, energy model 
of DC server energy model, what you see that even in the idle server consumes about 66 percent of the peak load of the CPU frequency. Even in, in this idle state, it uh, takes a, uh, a considerable amount of energy. So, that it is a always a running energy. So, uh, ideally if a particular service provider has no load something, it, it has to maintain the things. It is it is like uh, if we consider that is in a if you uh, in a particular uh, shop say ice cream parlor or so, even there is no, no uh, customer or not that uh, particular customer, it has to maintain as a particular level of cooling and uh, type of things. right? So, it is a some sort of a uh, energy level is there. There are uh, typical there are different model of energy models in this case that is we have a fixed uh, in a power model where the memory uh, modules disk etcetera. Another CPU based on that uh, frequency and number of fixed CPU up etcetera we can have another uh, other model. Similarly, if you look at the switches energy model, so there are different uh, category of things. One is that what we see that the chassis, the chassis where if we ha have say say a bunch of blade servers, so it goes into a chassis, right? So uh, typically say chassis can contain the 16 uh, blades or of half height size. So, that, that, that chassis itself consume energy. So, if you look at that the 36 around 36 percent of the a typical figure just to show you a rough cut figure that how things uh, how the energy is important a chassis consume around 36 percent uh, the line cards around 53 percent and this port trans receiver where the data being uh, um, transmitted or transmitted or received is 11 percent. right? So, this model that P chassis plus number of line cards into P line cards and that number of aggregation of the number of ports and along with that uh, the summation of the things with that number of uh, ports is, is, is that summation of the energy consumption will be the overall switching energy consumption. And that is also if we see that uh, it can be considerable uh, based on that if it is if it is properly loaded and type of things like I can have uh, traffic appropriately uh, distributed, I can have a better figure out here. So, uh, this all those things has a has a definite impact on the environment right or environment this environment is not what we are talking about the cloud environment, but it is environment as a whole that overall uh, environment like as we are talked about carbon foot footprinting there may be effect of uh, heating, there may be other different sort of uh, polluting effect. right? So, data centers are not only expensive to maintain, but also unfriendly to the environment, it can be unfriendly. Carbon emission due to data center worldwide is now more than uh, more than both Argentina and Netherlands emission. So, this is one figure it shows that the carbon emissions due to data centers worldwide is uh, more than two countries overall emission high energy cost and huge carbon footprints are incurred due to massive amount of electricity needed to power and cool numerous servers hosted in these data centers. Right? So, this is this is another uh, major challenge of looking at it. So, it is a huge energy consumption. So, we need to balance between this performance versus energy efficiency as the energy cost increasing while availability decreases there is a need to shift focus from optimizing data centers resource management for pure performance alone to optimizing energy efficiency while maintaining high service level performance. So, as uh, the, like when we talk about resource management we may be looking uh, primarily on the performance alone. right? So, we need to look at that performance vis a vis this uh, energy management. So, how, how overall uh, uh, this can be achieved performance versus energy efficiency can be achieved is there the like reducing power cost and maximizing revenue may be the thing like power cost and carbon emissions are ever increasing. So, we need to look at in a more more uh, practical way. So, in if you look at um, in the modeling terms, so in our uh, this model uh, this energy component should come into play right that how how that 
need to be managed, how need to be controlled should come into play. There are uh, several uh, initiatives needed from the cloud service providers end like cloud service provider need to adopt measures to ensure that their profit margin is not dramatically reduced due to high energy cost. Right? Amazon's uh, estimate one figure shows that the energy related cost to the data center amount to 42 percent of the total budget and include both direct power consumption and cooling infrastructure amortized over 15 year period. Google, Microsoft, you are building large data center in barren desert land surrounded by Columbia uh, river to exploit the cheap hydroelectric power etcetera. So, that is a tendency of make the data center more near to the power uh, to the power generation unit. So, that your transmission uh, transmission of power transmission loss etcetera are reduced uh, to a drastic uh, drastically. So, uh, taking so if we this is a typical uh, green cloud uh, architecture if we look at. So, there are uh, there are at the bottom end is physical machines, uh, there are uh, several virtual machines and this green cloud allocator what we say now the green cloud uh, brokering system. So, uh, uh, which which brokers in favor of the consumers. So, this is a grid negotiator, service analyzer, consumer profiler, pricing, energy monitor, service scheduling, VM manager, accounting. These components were uh, otherwise also there in the architecture. What we see more is, is looking at that energy consumption, energy consumption related parameter or matrix come into play. Right? So, a broker which uh, look at QS and energy based provisioning of the different cloud service provider based on this the provision on this different cloud service provider. So, it is uh, it is more energy aware provisioning of uh, services. So, similar that uh, green uh, if you look at the green broker. So, it has uh, uh, so, it uh, a typical cloud broker list cloud services schedule application that is the major duty of the things. So, when you look at the green broker, so analyze user requirement, calculate cost and carbon footprint of the services, carbon aware scheduling. So, the in now the scheduling is carbon aware uh, scheduling, right? Brokering services such as scheduling monitoring, carbon dioxide analyzing services, cloud request services. So, it does a carbon aware scheduling. Similarly, we have a green middleware where where uh, what we say that uh, green IAS. So, uh, in the so what if you remember the initial uh, figure. So, we said storage virtualized service etcetera energy temperature sensor demand predictor is added. Here also we have at the pass level that green profiler power capping green compiler uh, similarly green resource allocation system at the pass level in the SAS level power capping, green software services and so and so forth. So, these are the different uh, way we try to address these issues. There is a there is some uh, effort of looking at that power uses effectiveness measure uh, to find out that what is PUE and uh, how to measure that how the how effectiveness is this power uses. So, there are different theories behind this. So, uh, this is a rough cut measure that how whether we can measure this power uses effectiveness uh, of uh, a typical infrastructure or a typical cloud service provider. So, to summarize uh, clouds are essentially data centers hosting application services offered on subscription basis. However, they consume high energy to maintain their operations. So, high operational cost plus additionally environmental impact which we try to uh, ignore. So, that is one of the major aspects presented. So, what we look at the uh, look at the carbon aware green computing framework to look at. So, there are several open issues lot of research to be carried out to maximize energy efficiency in cloud centers developing regions or uh, to benefits the most benefits the uh, more that where should be situation and so and so forth. So, what we see overall that uh, uh, overall this sort of uh, computing aspects has a has a major uh, concern uh, not only 
from from the service provider or consumer point of view it's a concern worldwide uh, from the environment point of view that the huge amount of energy being consumed which has a carbon footprint and uh, a uh, better and there is a need for better energy management to for so that uh, this type this uh, sort of uh, cloud computing environment in or with lot of benefits are able to exploit it by the uh, consumer okay so we need to head for some sort of a green cloud computing environment thank you